Hello there, fight friends. We are with C. Lau, who is uh, speaking with us from Toronto, where he is getting ready for his fight this upcoming weekend in Trinidad and Tobago. C., thank you for joining us. Thank you, Andy. Glad to be here. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you're glad. We're all glad. Glad is good. Glad is, glad is, is happy yeah. and happy is good. So mm -hmm. uh, for the people who might be watching this who don't know you, just take a second and talk about yourself, your name and where you're from and what your training background is with fighting. My name is C. Lau. Uh, I'm a mixed martial arts competitor. Um, I started um, with Sanda. If you're not familiar with Sanda, it's a form of uh, Chinese kickboxing. Just looks, it really looks like MMA, but without the groundwork. So as soon as there's a takedown, the ref will stop the match, stand both fighters up, and then they'll continue on the feet. Um, not a lot of uh, Sanda here in Canada. Um, it's pretty popular in China, in Russia, in the Middle East, but in Canada, it uh, still hasn't really picked up yet. So uh, while I was training, I, you know, I was looking for avenues to compete and uh, ended up competing in mixed martial arts. Um, how old were you when you started training Sanda? Uh, I would say um, 19, 18, 19. Yeah. And how old are you now? Kind of late. I am now... I'm 34 now, turned 34 yeah. this year. So uh, it started kind of late, I guess. It, it depends who you ask, but um, I uh, kind of got into combat sports a little later in life. Uh, mm -hmm. Or some people might say it's, uh, it's your prime, right? 18, 19. And then I started competing mixed martial arts, uh, I believe, uh, 2022. I had my yeah. first amateur fight. Well, I'd say a lot of people say that uh, your prime in mixed martial arts, your prime... As a, as a peak physicality for an adult male is probably not till at least you're 30. So 31, 32. So you're probably doing okay right now, aren't you? How do you feel? Uh, yeah, it depends. You know, it depends on everybody's a little bit different. You know, their chronological age might not be, um, you know, their, their physical age. You know, some people age a little bit slower. And um, I think I like to believe that I'm one of those people. Um, but I'd be lying if I if I said that I didn't feel my age. You know, I, I definitely yeah. feel it catching up to me. Recovery is a little bit more difficult, and me being uh, fighting and competing in the lighter weight classes, uh, it yeah. is a little bit different, right? You can see you'll see heavyweights competing into their 40s, whereas um, at flyweight, the weight I'm competing at next weekend, um, it's it's a little more rare to see older flyweights. Do you think it's just because? in the lighter weight classes, it's, it's known as being faster? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, your reflexes matter a lot. And when that starts to go, sometimes hard to keep up. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to slow us little guys down. Well, regardless, you have signed a contract and you are fighting this weekend. So when I saw this fight card, uh, I was kind of caught by surprise because it's not something I'm mm -hmm. uh, without accustomed to. Fighting in Trinidad and Tobago, there's actually, I think, like five Canadians fighting on the, on the card. Tell me a little bit about yeah. how you got signed on to that and how you became exposed to that organization, which is, uh, I think, Caribbean Ultimate Fist Fighting, Cuff. Correct, Cuff, yeah. So um, big shout out to uh, my friend Boyan from Dick Boy Fight Club. Yeah. He's the one who um, introduced me to the promoter. And, uh, you know, with, uh, without him, this fight never would have happened. So he, he's competed there before a few years ago. He's the Cuff flyweight champion. Mm -hmm. um, and, he, you know, he fought there and had good experiences there. And he's a good, good friend of mine, good training partner of mine. And he introduced me to the idea and then uh, decided to sponsor myself to, uh, to go down there and, and compete against the against what was supposed to be the best uh, in the Caribbeans, but fortunately he got injured and he pulled out. So now I'm fighting a Venezuelan. Mm -hmm. So the first opponent was Kadane. And yeah, I think a lot of people were looking yep. forward to that fight too, because he's got a, he's got a good reputation and your new opponent's name mm -hmm. is, uh, let's see, Guillermo Salazar. So tell us what you know about him. Um, I know he's uh Owen one, just like myself. Um, two uh, professional losers competing, uh, uh, and somebody's always got to go. You know, hopefully it's mine. Yeah, yeah. Imagine you just, somebody's always got mm -hmm. to go. Imagine if it's a draw. Yeah, imagine. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. Andy. 
<laughs> now, people who hear you say that might think that you're just a, a, a one fight fighter so far, but that's not exactly true because you have quite an extensive amateur record too, where you saw a lot of success. So the fact that you were fighting for essentially a decade already before you went yeah. professional, do you think that gives you any kind of benefit, or especially in experience when it comes to becoming a professional? Yeah, I think, I think it definitely helps. But at the same time, if you look at my amateur record, a lot of the matches ended up finishing the first round. So I have like 12 fights, I think, amateur. Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, a handful of them finished in the first round. And with those with those kind of fights, you, you don't really learn as much as you would in like a three round with a three round decision. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think it definitely does help. But, um, you know, I, I uh, went pro uh, earlier this year, was supposed to go pro in 2018, but a whole bunch of stuff happened. So mm -hmm. um, here we are now, and we're just going to try to make, make the best of it, you know? Well, COVID didn't help with a lot of people. I mean, that put a big, uh, yeah, you know, a, a big, big mess yeah. into everybody's plans. Yeah. I think so it, you fought. kind of killed my career. Do you think it killed your career? Um, it killed what it, what it could have been, but, um, you know, some things you, there are things you can't control. Right. So yeah, we'll just, uh, do our best from here. Now you have fought, uh, quite often in the United States, you fought in Canada, you fought, now you're going to be fighting in the Caribbean after this weekend. Um, yeah. what's the thought process for you when you're getting ready for a fight in your backyard in Canada, as opposed to essentially going into enemy territory? Um, I kind of prefer competing abroad. I feel like there's less pressure, you know, I'm compete. I always compete against uh, local guys uh, and, you know, all the, all the cards are, are stacked against me. And I kind of like that challenge and um, going to fight a guy who's supposed to beat me. And I think I thrive in that kind of environment. Tell us about your fighting style. What do you like as a, as a mixed martial artist? Um, I think I'm pretty well-rounded. Um, I used to be a striker, you know, com competing on in the States, um, competing against a lot of wrestlers um, and they were just looking to take me down. So I kind of, kind of had built, built my skills as a striker, um, looking to uh, keep the fight on the feet. But um, now I'm, as I'm starting to get older, I feel like it's always safer to take the fight to the ground and uh, control where the fight goes. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, I, I think I'm pretty well-rounded. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of my fights in, as, as an amateur, I was like, kind of like the striker, uh, the wrestler would take me down. And a lot of times I would submit them off my back. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm pretty well-rounded. <clears throat> I like to believe that anywhere the fight goes, I can hold my own there. Nice. Um, at what point did you realize that you wanted to become a professional? And you said it was kind of delayed because of things, including COVID. So what was it about yeah. 2018 and then later on now that prompted you to switch from the amateur ranks to professional? Yeah. So when I started competing as an amateur, I kind of just w was doing it for fun um, and wanting to test myself. Um, I kind of built a, a decent amateur record competing against really good guys. Like I said before, guys I was supposed to lose to ended up ranked number one in the, the U S Northeast. And, um, you know, like it just, it was a nat natural progression, um, competing in New York. Uh, there wasn't a lot of professional fights at the time, even now, very little professional mm -hmm. fights in New York, you know, it was illegal to fight professionally in New York for a long time. Uh, so a lot of, uh, like fans and, and people were paying like pro level money for, for amateur fights. Right. And we had, the small four ounce gloves, um, no shin guards, no head protection, basically competing professional rules aside from it being three minute rounds. Um, so it, it was just a natural progression for me. I wanted to go pro in 2018, uh, had a contract to fight for BTC. Unfortunately, I had to pull out from my fight because uh, my appendix burst and I had to go to wow. uh, emergency surgery. So, uh, once I had that fixed up, I was sitting in, in the hospital bed, depressed, not sure what to do because, you know, I couldn't fight professionally. I couldn't follow through with that contract. I ended up taking an amateur fight that was like um, maybe two weeks after I got out of the hospital, ended up losing that fight. Um, that was 2019. And then, um, and then, and then, you know, uh, COVID happened. 
-hmm. and that that kind of delayed everything fought again amateur after covid lost and you know uh, on a two fight skid decided to go pro anyways um because you know competing as, as an amateur with my record i'm probably going to be fighting better guys than i would be fighting pro so sure i decided to go pro um had four fights fall through all of them like yep. the week before the week of and then competing competing in my first uh, pro fight this year in march yeah so yeah that's my sad story <laughs> It's not a sad story. It's life, man. It, things happen to, to all of yeah, us, to, to everybody right. in all walks of life. Right. And just, you know, you, it's, it all depends on how you roll with it, how you, how you keep on carrying on. So you're still yeah. carrying on. You're still fighting. Uh, do you feel like you have yeah, something to prove with, 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 with a, a two fight skid, as you put it as an amateur and then your, your first uh, pro fight as a loss as well? Um, do I have something to prove? Maybe, but you know, I kind of, uh stop fighting for other people a long time ago i'm just doing this for myself yeah um, and maybe something to prove to myself i don't think so i think i you know i could retire now and be happy i did some some pretty cool things um so not really i'm not i'm not looking to prove anybody wrong i'm just trying to compete test myself and uh experience everything that uh that life has to to, to give me yeah for sure now the thing is Records can be deceiving, right? Like I say this all the time. Sometimes records can tell you some information about a fighter. Sometimes it, it can't really tell you the whole story. So your your one pro fight in BTC, it was by no means a blowout either. It was a fantastic fight. You just happened to be on the losing end, but you still have impressive skills, still looking really good. So, I mean, for me, there's no reason why you would stop. I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy you're still you're sticking with it and you're fighting again because, you know, there's a good chance you're going to get some success. Yeah, I hope so. I, f I feel like my skills are there. I fought a, a undefeated guy, um, and I feel like I, I was I was in there with him the whole fight until, um, you know, he, he uh, slapped on that triangle. Um, so, yeah, I think I would like to I would like to keep going, keep competing, and see, see where it takes me. Where do you train, see? Yeah, I'm here at my gym at, uh, in Scarborough, Ontario. Um, we recently rebranded to uh, Trillium Mixed Martial Arts, mm -hmm. formerly known as uh, AST MMA. Got a great stable of fighters, um, a lot of a lot of pro level guys, uh, and a lot of great amateurs that are that are up and coming. Uh, a lot of undefeated guys that are that are uh, you know now looking to, to make their their pro uh, pro debut. Mm -hmm. Tell us uh, some more names of some of the people you train with, and especially your main training partners. You said Boyan was a, yeah, was I, a big training partner for you. Mm -hmm, yeah, I train with Boyan. He he's not uh, here around here at Trillium as much. I normally uh, travel and uh, go abroad at two other gyms to train with him because he's across the city. He's in uh, in the Brampton area, Brampton yeah. area, right? So when I'm working here with my guys here, I got like a top prospect, Diego De Jesus. He's a really good uh, amateur, seven and zero, um, looking to make his jump to professional. Uh, Salik Bagadinov. Um, well, let me think. Uh, a bunch of other guys: Bluski, Mohammed. Um, got a lot of amateurs that here that are that are that are really high level guys. How important is it to have maybe, young maybe up cut, maybe cut that part. I was going to say, maybe cut that part. I'm forgetting a bunch of people. I don't want them to be pissed <laughs> off at me and beat me up in sparring, you know? <laughs> no, do you know what? I'm going to do you a favor and let them beat you up because, yeah. you know, it's, it's important <laughs> to stay humble. And I, that was yeah, leading on right. to my next question. Right. I was leading on to my next question. How important is it to have yeah. some young studs, you know, nipping at your heels? And, you know, I'm 55 years old too, and I don't train all that often. But when I do, it's really humbling that it doesn't matter what my skill level is. You know, some 20-year-old kid can, like, smash me sometimes. So, you know, oh, yeah. how does that feel? Uh, it sucks, first of all, um, but you kind of have to, um, you have to be smart about it too, right? Because these, these young guys, they come up and they're hungry and they're looking to prove something. Um, but uh, being an older guy, you know, you have to be careful not to get injured. You got to train smart. Mm -hmm. It's good to have these guys um, to compete with these guys when the time is right. And then it, you got to know when to back off as well and to uh, use your experience. For sure. So best case scenario after this weekend in Trinidad and Tobago, your O is going to go and you'll be a, a one and one pro fighter. Do you have any long-term plans for the sport or do you just really going to wait and see how it goes after this weekend? 
Yeah, I think I'm just going to take it one fight at a time. But ultimately, my goal is to compete, uh, gain experience, and help the fighters that we have here, help them train, help them as a coach. I think I'm a, a lot better coach uh, than a fighter. So um, really, I'm doing this so that I can, mm-hmm. you know, bring these guys up and I'll be able to tell them to do, to do things that I've done myself. Is there any part of it that you, to, to be a good coach, you have to have the experience that you have to sort of let your students know that, hey, I know what I'm talking about. This is what I've gone through and you, you should learn from my experience. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think it's mandatory because, you know, there have been um, world champion swimming coaches that have never gotten wet before. And for whatever reason, they're just able to um, train uh, world class athletes. Um, but I, I do think it is uh, valuable to have that experience, not only um, for the athletes looking at the coach, but also to know without a doubt that I have experienced it before and know what it, what it feels like, you know, and that that will that experience is invaluable to to be able to coach someone knowing that you've been there before. For sure. OK, see, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. It's pretty awesome. I'm really excited that you're actually going to represent uh, your gym in, in Ontario and Canada in the Caribbean. So uh, we wish you the best of luck. And any final words, anything you'd like to say before we go? I'd like to give a big shout out to all my sponsors, um, uh, Thick Boy, especially, who's, uh, you know, helping me out a lot this camp to uh, head over to Trinidad. Um, I have a bunch of other, other sponsors that support me. Um, Thank you so much to you, uh, MMA Andy. Make sure you guys follow, subscribe to his channel. He does a lot for Canadian mixed martial arts. And uh, if Thank you're you. interested in my fight, uh, I hope to see you guys there. And uh, again, hopefully my old will, will leave the, after this fight. All right, see. Best of luck from everyone here. Thank you, Andy. Have a good day. I'll see you soon. You too. Safe travels.